Let's talk technology. What's up investors and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Atomira, ticker A-T-O-M. This is a stock that we've previously covered on the channel before and I felt the time was right to make a follow up video. This is a company that I feel has great potential. An exciting company operating at the cutting edge of the semiconductor fabrication industry. This was originally brought to my attention from a comment on one of my very first videos on this channel and I've been following them ever since. So in today's video we'll be looking at who exactly are Atomira, what they do and why it matters. We will look at the very latest news and in addition to the management team. We will look at the technical charts and then the most recent financial statements released and then I'll give you my conclusion on this stock. Before we get into the video it takes a lot of time to research companies like this so if you find any value in this video can I ask you to smash that like button. It literally costs nothing but it helps me out so much. I'm aiming to get 150 likes, help me make that happen. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification. So you don't miss out on any new content like this, it's 100% free and a great way to show your support for the channel. What do you think of Atomira, have you invested and what are your price targets? For the next 6 months or 1 year. I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. Now let's get into it. So who are Atomira Incorporated? Atomira is a semiconductor materials and intellectual property licensing company focused on deploying its technology into the $450 billion semiconductor industry. The company was founded in 2001 by Robert Mears with the vision to develop a platform of materials technologies for use across multiple industries. In response to the slowdown in the advancement of Moore's Law, Atomira uses atomic level material science to develop Mears Silicon Technology, which provides multiple benefits to industry participants. For semiconductor designers, MST improves performance and power efficiency while potentially reducing cost. For semiconductor fabs, the technology allows them to extend the life of their expensive manufacturing facilities by providing a new unexpected suite of material improvements within existing process nodes. After several years of research to perfect the technology, Atomira is now engaged with leading semiconductor companies to integrate MST into their manufacturing flow. Atomira went public in August 2016 and trades on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange under the ticker ATOM. So why is this stock gathering so much attention? And what's the big deal with the semiconductor industry? For anyone who is unaware of the importance of the semiconductor shortage, it's a huge issue. So let's talk a bit about that and see why Atomira's technology is so important. Consumers are facing price rises and shortages of products from TVs and mobile phones to cars and games consoles as a global shortage in semiconductors grows. The shortage in chips within every electronic device in the world has been steadily worsening since last year. At first the problem was only a temporary delay in supplies as factories shut down and the pandemic hit, but a surge in demand means that we now have a crisis. Car manufacturers investing in tech-heavy electric vehicles the boom in sales of TVs and home computers and the launch of new games consoles and 5G enabled mobile phones have all driven demand. Even Apple, the world's biggest buyer of semiconductors, spending 58 billion annually, was forced to delay the launch of its iPhone 12 by two months last year due to the shortage. Ford, Volkswagen and General Motors are among car manufacturers that have been forced to cut back on production due to shortages. Ford recently said the profits could be hit by up to 2.5 billion this year and General Motors said it could face a 2 billion hit to profit. Swedish auto joint Volvo announced that it is forced to halt its truck production due to a global shortage of semiconductors. The world's second largest producer of heavy goods vehicles will implement stop days across its global truck manufacturing operations. Sony, which along with other console makers has struggled with stock shortages over the last year, said it might not hit sales targets for the new PS5 this year because of the semiconductor supply issue. Microsoft's Xbox has said it forecasts supply issues continuing at least until the second half of the year. What's really incredible is that Samsung, that the company might have to postpone the launch of its high-end smartphones due to the shortage. The fact that Samsung are not only the world's second largest buyer of chips, but are also the world's second largest producer of chips, consuming 36 billion of them themselves says everything about the problem. So in news today, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger said that he expects 10 good years of growth in the semiconductor industry on CNBC's Evolve conference. Also, Qualcomm CEO Cristiano Amon said he sees an opportunity to partner with Intel and its foundry service. 
Looking further down at this article, the remarks suggest that Intel's investments in chip production, such as plans to spend $20 billion to build a chip fabrication plant in Arizona, will create capacity that will be used even after the current microchip shortage abates. Intel also recently announced plans to become a foundry or a company that manufactures microchips for other companies. Now, although this news does not involve Atomira directly, let's not forget who their target customers and partners are. As we've seen already, both Intel and Qualcomm are both potential major customers. But for me, the most interesting news in this article, besides the plans to build a mega fab, is this. The two companies do share some strategic concerns. They are both likely to be boosted by the package included in the technology bill currently in the US House of Representatives that would provide $52 billion to fund semiconductor research design and manufacturing. As an investor, it's always good to hear about huge government grants and funding, and this could provide a huge boost for Atomira going forward. Another thing, something that I've read a lot in the past few weeks is about insiders selling shares in Atomira, such as Scott Beabod and Robert Mears. However, something that is not talked about as much is that major investment firms have been buying shares at a much higher rate, including, as we can see here, the likes of BlackRock and Morgan Stanley, who have increased their shareholdings massively. Morgan Stanley has increased their shareholding 1156%. And only last week, Craig Hallam initiated coverage on Atomira, giving them a buy rating and a price target of $28, which is not only a huge increase on the previous price target set at $8 and $10, but is also an increase on the current price of $24.93. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I usually like to talk about the management team of companies that I cover. But in order to keep this video from being too long and repeating myself, I won't look at the existing management because I've covered it in the previous video. However, we will speak about the appointment of Jeff Lewis, who was recently joined the team as the lead marketing and business development. In his leadership role, Lewis will be focused on continuing to advance and deploy Adamira's patented MSD technology and expand strategic business relationships to enable customer success. Lewis has extensive experience in the semiconductor IP memory and EDA industries working closely with the world's leading semiconductor chip and wafer fab equipment manufacturers. With Atomira's growing portfolio of technologies applications and customer engagements, it is vital the strong executives guide the patented MST technology to the market. Jeff's expertise in transistor technology, deep relationships in the semiconductor industry and strategic vision will allow Atomira to improve outcomes with their partners and customers. Atomira's innovative technologies dramatically lower the cost and power consumption of semiconductor devices, thus enabling significant advances in mobile, AI, automotive and other application segments. Most recently, Lewis was Senior Vice President of Business Development at Spin Memory, and prior to Spin Memory, he was the SVP of Business Development and Marketing at Suvolta Inc. Additional leadership roles include President and CEO of Cyrenova, an EDA software company, SVP of Business Development and Marketing at Innovative Silicon, and Vice President positions at Form Factor, Artisan and Compass Design Automation. And looking at the career that Jeff Lewis has had, I'm sure he's a very well-connected individual. The MST technology is used to enhance semiconductors, reduce power consumption, improve performance, and reduce manufacturing costs for wafer manufacturers and the electronic device designers. Atomira is currently engaged with over 50% of the world's top semiconductor makers. As you can see here, Atomira has got partnerships and potential partnerships with a broad range of companies across different sectors. The two that catch my attention straight away are Intel and Samsung who we mentioned a moment ago, produce over $50 billion of chips every year. As we can see from this chart, the company is at various different phases with each customer. However, it is worth noting that a high number of customers are now at phase three, and one customer has gone to phase four. So there's approximately 370 wafer fabs operating worldwide, and MST's deployment in wafer fabs is low cost. Using equipment already employed by many in the semiconductor industry, 
and without the need for exotic new materials. The adoption of MST in just one fab could make Atomera profitable from royalties alone. That's just one fab. In summary, they have high margin, recurring revenue financial model. They have strong technology with loads of patents and a strong balance sheet. And they have traction with many top industry players. So when we look at TradingView and we look at the graph over the past few months, we can see here that huge rise that Atomera share price had gone up to, reaching approximately $50 in February. Before that market correction, seen, seen the share price tumble over the last few months. Now it's important to note here that at its low point last month, the share price was around about $13, which was about a 75% drop from its February high. But we can definitely see that over the past month, Atomira has been moving in this upward channel. And I do expect that the current share price will not drop much lower than about $22 or $23, but may continue increasing rapidly from here on. So what does Atomira's financial position look like? So when we look at the financial statements, we can see that they have total assets of over $39 million and total liabilities of $2 million, giving them an asset to liability ratio of 20 to one. This is fantastic. Assets is also primarily made up of 36 million in cash. A strong cash balance is vital to a development stage company, especially one that hasn't began to see revenues yet. But it also means that we're unlikely to see any more dilution. Adamira had completed an equity offering on the 5th of January, bringing in nearly $25 million, and another equity offering back in May of last year, which brought in approximately $10 million. These share offerings were not a surprise because management had said it in the annual report that they had expected to do this. However, in these financial statements, in the notes they have said, we believe that our available working capital is sufficient to fund the requirements for at least the next 12 months following the date of the filing of this report. So I don't expect there to be another share offering in the near future. Looking at the income statement, we can see that Atomira had very little by way of revenue in the first quarter, only $400,000 compared to $62,000 in Q1 last year. As we've said already, Atomira has only just got their first customer to stage four, which is the start of the revenue recognizing stages. So over the course of this year, I expect that we'll see more revenue, but it will remain quite low until they get more customers to the later stages. However, I definitely expect to have news within the next six to eight weeks on this regard. Operating expenses are quite high, but with this company in its development stage, you would expect to see high costs like these for research and development before seeing any significant revenue. Overall, when you look at the amount of cash and cash equivalents and then compare that with their cash burn for operating, they do currently have enough cash for the next 24 to 36 months. Although I do expect that the selling and marketing expenses will rise soon. So guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Before I give you my final thoughts, if you've watched all the way through, please hit that like button. It, it takes more time than you could imagine to research these companies, do the editing and then get these videos out to you. If you're new to the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and bell notification. I'll be running a competition later this month for subscribers. Like and subscribe to take part. More details coming soon and leave a comment down below to say that you've liked and subscribed so that I know. So what do I think? As I said before, I really like this company. I think the technology help solve a long-standing problem that has been growing and growing for over a decade. Over the past few months especially, the shortage of semiconductors is becoming apparent to pretty much everyone. I think most people will have noticed some issues that have arised from this shortage in one form or another, whether that's buying a new car, a new phone, a new computer. It's starting to become a huge problem with cars especially, with some people having to wait months before taking delivery of new cars. My main concern here is that is that the technology hasn't been fully integrated by any of the customers yet, with only one customer getting to stage four so far. But this is expected to go from stage four to stage five within the space of three to four months. Then there's the fact that there's a lot of customers at the earlier stages, and it will be expected that they will also get to this stage. But it might be some time before any major revenue starts to flow into the company, but there should definitely be enough cash runway to sustain this. As always guys, this is just my opinion. If anyone's thinking about buying into this stock, I encourage you to do your own research. 
And if you find anything of interest that I've not mentioned in my videos, leave a comment down below and I'll look into it. As I said before, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Thanks for watching the video and what are your thoughts on the future of Atomira? And what are your price targets? Leave a comment down below and I'll catch you in the next one.